Hey, it's Elliot Wilson from Rap Radar. We're back, man. Crown, this is the third edition. We're on the road, man. We're in D.C., man. This is Wale's show for the gifted. You know, J. Cole mentioned in the last Crown about new legends, how these new artists today want to achieve great things. Nobody embodies that like Wale. I'm the most outspoken nigga that's ever done Crown so far. <laughs> that's why we had to wait for the third one. That's stuff that our generation, like, niggas are scared to want to be great now. I'm dancing. I dance on stage, and then I'll give you a 16 out of blow your... Fucking Sarah Bellema. It's gonna be a great night at DC. I even get to introduce him. Like, here comes Wale for Lauren. You Yo. messed up my intro, man. Dang. All right, Wale. Part of me, if I'm too relaxed, I'm, I'm just comfortable. I'm home, and we have a regular you home, how you say? How you feel? I'm feel good. Feel good. It's a big day, man. You back yeah. in the city. Yep. Yeah. And the gifted, man. Gifted in stores on Tuesday, y'all. I hope everybody going in here going to get a copy or two in this joint. Like two days away, man. Yeah. You work really hard in this, man. Like I told you backstage, you know, it's, to me it's your finest work. And I know like you were very, you were more hands on with this project than any other album you've worked on. Like talk a little bit about that process. So this album, basically, um, I made it. All right, quick little story real quick. So when we did. We love Lo stories at Crown. Lotus Flower Bomb, <laughs> right? When we did Lotus Flower Bomb, uh, Miguel wasn't a fan of the song. Like, he liked it, you know what I'm saying? But he did his artist shit. He was like, oh, okay. So when I sent it to him, he sent it back with a different hook. Like, you know, we, uh, my man Sam Du wrote, the, wrote the, uh, the initial hook to Lotus Flower Bomb. So I sent it back to him, and, and he sent it back to me with another hook. So. I had to, I, I took him out. Like, I was like, we had a show. We was, we was performing um, at Murrayweather Post Pavilion with Chuck Brown and a whole lot of dope people. Yeah. So we was performing, and this is when I wanted to get the hook done for Lotus Flower Bomb. So long story short, man, I had to take this man out. We went out for drinks. I had to get a confirmation we was going to get it done in the whole nine yards just to get the record done. To get him to do it the way you wanted him to do it. Exactly. So yeah. I say that to say this whole album, Everything you hear, you hear, or you that you heard on the album is what I heard in my head. Like, put this right there, put that right there, turn them vocals down, put some backgrounds here. All of those things is were, were things that I did on the album for the first time. And did you feel like you had the cloud now that there would be less back talk about it? Like people just kind of, because you have a lot of guests on the album, like. Everyone from like Nicki Minaj to Juicy J to Wiz Khalifa. You, you have a lot of guests on there. Like, uh -huh. how did you get them to contribute but still understand your vision? I gave them, most of them, I gave them a speech, like what I was trying to do. All right, what was the Yo Gotti speech? The album, <laughs> but me and Yo Gotti, Yo, me and Yo Gotti been cool since when I didn't have no deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like everybody, I gave them the, the speech on this album, like to what just to, the to get them on it. I mean, I wrote the gifted like a book. I wrote it like a brook. Listen, if you listen closely, I don't know if we got any rappers, engineers, producers in here, but if you listen to how some songs fade out, it's laying the foundation of what the next song is. So you, it's made to listen in chronological order. And I wrote it like a book, and I was just like, all right, if I want to get this emotion across, I mean, how, who can I add to this record to, to get that emotion across? And you know, it's like for Bricks, uh, you know, I'm, I ain't no drug dealer. I ain't never been no drug dealer. So I need to, I need to paint that picture though because it's the part in the book where we talk about that. So that's how I picked the feature for that and so forth. And of course, when you got a song like Clappers, you know, everybody likes that Clappers, right? And you talking about Shorty got a big old butt. Got to call Nicki Minaj, right? You see? <laughs> You see how the album wrote itself? You're a, you're a visionary, Florence. Hey, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the album wrote itself. Yeah, yeah. So how did you get, so what was the speech you gave Nicki? Like, how did you get Nicki to agree to be on the record? It was, I mean, it was, that record is so no-brainer. When you hear it, it's like, oh, word. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like I could have been 10 for 10 sending that to, like, rappers that want to get on it because they know what that is. Like, everybody, you, everybody like a hit record, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And as far as clappers, that's where it fits on the album. Like, I'm talking, it, you know, um, it goes from bricks to clappers. If you hear how, if you listen closely, listen to how bricks ends, and then listen to clappers, you're going, you know, you're going to get into it. And clappers, like, obviously you sample EU, and like, you know, it's a, it's a reference to the go-go scene here in DC, we're in your hometown, like, do you feel like that that record represents kind of like, you come in full circle, that you at this point of your career could make a record that's kind of old to the go-go sound, but then still, still be hip hop and still be, a hit record? That's the part Central of the, hit record. That's the part of the um the theme, the gifted. You know, you you know, <clears throat> before our time 
And that up, the next time, it was, you know, you had Junkyard and you had EU and you had shit like that. So I'm just trying to pay, I was trying to pay homage to that era of DC history on the album called The Gifted. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it wasn't more so about what's happening now on Go Go. It was what, you know, the history of Go Go. And that's why, you know, I try to mesh it with the new sound of Go Go, like a bounce beat mixed with the old joint. Yeah. You got a song on there called Simple Man. I think, I, I think I've heard that's your favorite song on there, and that's a song where you kind of give yourself also production credit, so you was really hands-on with it. Like, why that title? Like, when I think of you, I don't think Simple Man. Like, I feel like you're a very complex type of dude, that misunderstood dude, uh -huh. talented dude, like, you when know. When it all boils down to it, it's just about what you want out of life. <clears throat> Excuse me. What you want out of life. Do you want, um, do you want, like, me personally, I don't do it. Like, I don't do it for the money. Like, but that, the money is really like the medicine, like, to, to, to balance out how fucked up this hip hop shit is. Like, you know, how, how crazy it is, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I talk about, like, if, it, if, 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 if you talk about this whole celebrity lifestyle, I'll take the money, you could keep the fame. And I just feel like that's where a lot of, a lot of us young niggas is in this rap shit, that's how we think. Like, you could take the fame, I'll take the money if I gotta take one of it, you know what I'm saying? So you almost look at fame as a negative thing attached to the money? Fame evil. Fame evil, like, I went to Safeway today. I went to Safeway to, get see, to try to see if I could get one of them Washington Post. And the looks I was getting, it was like, it was, it was like a, something went, ain't pure about that. Something ain't like, it's not, it's not, there's no joy going into the airport and you going, you trying to go through TSA and everybody stopping and looking at you like, and that's no joy. That's, I don't think, I, I didn't sign up for that. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what fame is. Fame is when you go to your, you try to go home to your, uh, you leave your after party, your tour bus gets you, go to the uh, hotel and there's like four girls waiting for you. Which sounds cool when you think about it, but if you're really in that seat where it's four people that followed you to your room, that's, that's evil. That shit ain't right. That's not, <laughs> is that evil? <laughs> that shit ain't right. Like that, that's... It's cool when you think about it, but like, but when yo, you think about it from a deeper But you'd be like, level, yeah. yo, I just got followed for four miles to my hotel, and like, they trying to take, I'm tired. I'm trying, like, I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> I got a flight in the morning. It's crazy. <laughs> but I, that's what I think is interesting about the gifted. I think a lot of the common themes is about fame and you, how you deal with fame and the price of fame, where, you know, you would think like, some, a lot of times with artists, their second album, you know, they say it's about, if the first album's successful, the second album's about how did they deal with the success. But now, even though this is your third album, the first one didn't do as well, your second album was successful, so now your third album is the one that's really dealing with how you've dealt with success, like what your life's been since you became Lotus exactly. Flower Bomb, hit maker, yep. star. So yep. was that harder to put down? Because I know you also did the Florin Project before that. Uh -huh. Did you feel like you had to get to the point where you could write about it and make the statement you wanted to make about how fame has affected you? I just wanted to, I wanted to be like super honest. Like this, this album ain't really, about, ain't really about making records. Like this, this album's about like me getting across what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. Like, you know what I'm saying? This wasn't like, the ambition was, I love it. Like that's like my child, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's way different in a sense like, I'm talking about songs like Sunshine, like, you know, I'm taking things that I heard in interviews, like, so why, like, do you have a girlfriend? It's at the third, and it's like, I'm talking about it on Sunshine, like, why, why am I thinking is how I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying? And every part of that album, I'm thinking about where I'm at mentally in my life right now, more so than just trying to make a song that people want to, you know, dance to and shit. Yeah, 88 is a great song, and you know. How you know, did you, <laughs> you leaked it? They downloaded it, but they gonna get the it on Tuesday, right? You ready you on Tuesday? Leak? <laughs> she said, yeah, so how you, did you leak my shirt? <laughs> it was her. Always the girl in the front row. See, police outside. You said, that, I like, you know what I love about the album too? I love your ad libs. Like, you, you, you sneak, if you listen to the album, when you really get the album, you really sit with it. And I don't think you can get that from the leak. It's like when you really get the album and you own it and you sit with it. Wale sneaks a lot of like, the, the, the point of view in the beginning of the songs, like your spoken word stuff you say. Like in the beginning of 88, you say, I got this thing on my mind about being great or attempting to be. Right. You know, it's like, the thing about it is like, even when people try to doubt it whether or not, you know, you're dope or not, you, your, your thing is to take it even a step further. I'm trying to be great. Like, there's a statue, because one day I think there's gonna be a statue of me. Like, right. that's the level I'm trying to go for. Like, right. what do you think makes it different than you and a lot of young rappers that, of the new generation that you're willing to say that you're going for that? It, it, you know, what's the crazy thing about it. Like, I, I grew up playing sports where we were supposed to aspire to be champions or be 
the, the best out of our group or, you know, all conference or just whatever. It, it, it's, it's, it's so sad to me that it's like frowned upon in hip hop to want to be upper echelon, you know what I'm saying? To want to be like in the, in the category of the greats. I remember my freshman year at, um, at Robert Morris, I wanted to be shit. Like I wanted to be where all the, you know, the people that's getting money under the table. I want to be where, I want to be where they at. Like yeah. you're not even allowed to aspire in our generation because it's like, oh, what you think you Jay-Z? What you think you, what you think you doing? What you think you, <laughs> like, it's like, yo, no, nah, I just want to be great. I want to be good. I study this shit. I, I watch, I watch niggas. I, I practice my craft. I want to be great. Like. Thank you. See, I was waiting for the first, like, I was waiting for the first inappropriate chime in. You put that word out there. You made a song called Legendary on the last album. Like, you put those terms out there to, like, reinforce that. Because I think it's okay to want to, like, but it's it's so fucked up because it's, like, on a daily basis, like. Thank you, though. You made him take his glasses off. I appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) I've been drinking. Fuck. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Nah, but I just, you know, it's, it's, it's like. You're not allowed to want to be like nothing. Like, yo, niggas, niggas settle for mediocrity. Like, I think I'm the best rapper, but let's just say I didn't. All right, all right, all right. Let's just say I didn't. Like, I'm allowed to want to try to be like the best niggas to do it. Like, yeah, what I want to not be the best. And, second and niggas best? in our generation be like, nigga, I can't. I could put up a picture of Jay Z, Kanye, and Nas if I want to, nigga, because I think I'm gonna be that when I get that age. I think I want to be there, nigga. Like, but niggas be like. What you think? You ain't like it's niggas. It's so <laughs> fucked up. Like you're not even allowed to want to be good. Like you can't even want nothing. Like niggas is so. And I say niggas. I don't know how other races live, but I'm a nigga in America. They don't want us to have shit. Like they just they want us to settle for mediocrity. Rapping, basketball, football, or fucking UPS. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, and I just feel like the gifted the gifted to me is like I. Y'all niggas might not know how to rap, but nigga, if you go to motherfucking Howard Morgan or fucking wherever the fuck you go, you're going to hear this heaven in the afternoon and you're going to want to go get some, do some shit with your life. Yeah. Because it's funny, with the last time you with the last crown, J. Cole mentioned the statement, new legends. And, you know, you look at this group now, you got a Drake, a Kendrick, you know, you, uh, Big Sean, like, you guys have ambition. And you're also connected to those 90s icons, the Jays, the Nas's, uh, the Kanye's, the Lil Wayne's. You know, Kanye's early 2000s, but you know what I mean. So how hard is to balance that? Because at the end of the day, you know, people are saying you ain't nice to Jay-Z, but Jay-Z manages you. Rich Climate manages you. Like, how do you, how do you balance it out where, like, you're also in business with the people that you're aspiring to be better than? I turn it on and off. When I'm in the studio, I'm not thinking about Jay-Z. I'm coming for your head, Jay-Z. Lyrically, like, I'm trying to be just like you. When I clock out and it's time to go to 4040 and we chilling, like, it's like, yo. So tell me about your Magna Carta, Holy Grail. <laughs> but when I when it's, when the gloves is on, like he ain't thinking about me. I'm not thinking about him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but like that's my nigga. Like you know, I, I've been managed by him for six years. So even when I when I'm done, I'm done with my tough guy talking in the mirror. I go check in with Hope. Like yo, what you think about this show? You know what I'm saying? Even he, he added a couple of little spices here and there on the album about arrangement and all that. Like yeah. I don't look at him as a Come on, man. You can't. You, you don't feel like Beyonce. he's trying to cut you down either. It's no, like, like he wants it, to build. But you know, but I use him as like that motivation in the studio. Like, hey, I'm coming, Mr. Carter. Holy Grail. What's up? Gifted, <laughs> nigga. You know what I'm saying? But like when it's over, like, it's that, you know, at the end of the day, like we get money together. We make millions, millions of dollars together. So I always got that respect for him. And, and niggas don't know, I was, like, I was probably the, the first rapper signer when it was S. Enterprises or whatever it used to be called. Yeah. I was there. So it was like, I learned so much from, 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 from Jay. I learned so much from that whole, you know, em, from Emory on down to climbing, World Wide West, the whole Rock Nation. Yeah. OG Wan, I'm learning from now on some sports stuff. So it's like, I love my Rock Nation family. Like, they helped me grow as a businessman. 